talk about how the world is dealing with COVID-19, but puppies, they're dealing with a virus of their own. Yeah, Nabil Ramana joins us this morning with a closer look on what vets are seeing, an increase in parvo cases here mm. in Central Texas. Yeah, not good news. We uh -huh. love puppies, but we don't want them to get sick. Yeah. Now, parvo can be deadly for puppies and vets I spoke to tell me during the pandemic, they have seen a rise in the number of cases, especially during the summer months. Oh, life's been a little hectic. A new puppy can be a lot of work. Um, a lot less sleep than normal. But with all the craziness. Sit. Sit. <gasps> Good boy. Good boy. Puppies somehow always make us smile. This is Rusty. He is a nine week old mini golden doodle. Caroline Carrick just got Rusty. And since then, she's been extra careful about where he goes because of the potential risk of parvo. We have seen a huge increase in parvo since COVID started. The parvo virus mainly affects puppies. So many people have gotten puppies. So many people have time to go out and about and don't realize that until their puppy has been fully vaccinated, vaccinated which typically occurs around 16 to 18 weeks of age, that they are susceptible to this virus. So what are the signs and symptoms your puppy might have parvo? The big ones are vomiting and diarrhea. They can also get really tired. Um, they can stop eating. Dogs can get parvo from soil. The virus can live in the dirt for years. So Carrick says she'll play it safe with Rusty until he's fully vaccinated. Sit. Good boy, Shay. Good job. Oh God, you're so smart. And there's no antiviral for the virus, according to the vet, but I'm told about 80% of puppies that are treated do survive, but that treatment can be very expensive, requiring around-the-clock care and could cost you thousands. Now, if you notice any signs or symptoms, take your puppy to the vet immediately. You got a puppy a few months back. Yes, How? and it, we dealt with that as well because oh, wow. we wanted to take him out and socialize with other dogs, but it was not the best thing because he was just a puppy at first, you know, yes. don't want him to get sick. It's kind of like children, right? You have to, Absolutely. <laughs> you have to get socialized yeah. them, but at the same time, you got to be careful and make sure that they don't come back sick. That's exactly, I remember <laughs> the first six weeks of having my baby was right around Christmas and Thanksgiving Flu. and we were sort of like, uh, we don't know and we'll see you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think Rusty's ready to get out <laughs> okay. Rusty, okay, we'll have a play date with Rusty and my pup when they get older. <laughs> All right, since the pandemic, there's been a demand in pet care. We've been talking about that as well. Local vets have been busy taking in more cases. Last month, when we brought you this story, we talked to workers at the Spicewood Springs Animal Hospital and they told us they have seen five or six emergencies every day. Before the pandemic, emergency calls were only once or twice a day.